Right, we left uh, St Andrews of Compton Bishop a minute ago and we've gently walked through the hamlet past the manor house and a few cottages and I'm surprised how well I've done this climb so far I mean it's not as if I, I think, before now, I've climbed up that steep one over there this is a gentle climb and I'm, I'm surprised how well I've done I mean there's still quite a bit to do but it's gentle now I've only got to get past a big stone up there and then we start curling round. I'm quite surprised how well I've done. I'm not boasting, I'm just saying. I think I'm fitter now than I was 10 years ago. I often think that actually, because I mean, I had a decade, decade of ill health. I wasn't ill, but I polluted myself with alcohol and fags and late nights and burning the candle at all ends. <sighs> Those little flowers in there, look. Look at them, having a little nice little place in there to stay with some family and a relative, look. They've got their own little world, these plants. Yeah, there's the big stone there. I often used to get to that stone. I feel knackered, but the difference today is it's late autumn. Well, it's October the 27th. Um, a good month into autumn, put it that way. Not late autumn. And although it's a sunny day and it's beautiful, it really is. I'm so glad I come out. Do you know, even though I've got lots of tree work to do, lots of videos to process, including this one today, I just can't stay in. I feel guilty if I stay in. To me, it's a sin to be in Especially when you live in a flat, you haven't got a garden, and you, you know, you, and you're an outdoor person. It's not easy, I tell you. Sometimes winter is a type of restful period for me, though, because I really get on with family tree work because it is murky, mucky, and colder out. But I still like those crisp winter days. I still love them. I just feel so refreshed, you know. That lovely little church. Something says, keep going, Sheila. Don't do anything rash. Just be, be have a quiet moment. Don't do anything rash. And don't overthink all the time, girl. Now, in a minute, I'll, I'll get up to where there's some people up there. And I'm curling round. Okay? But here is a lovely stone. It is a nice place to stop and have a drink of water, I must admit. And we will stop here. Yes, we will. People walking along the top where I was earlier. Before now, you know, I've ploughed down. <sighs> Trying to find a way through the ferns. I've taken so many risks in the past. Let's have a sit here. Let's have a sit here for a minute. Enjoy this peace. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. The sun on my face, my hair. My, my heart calming down a bit after climbing up the hill. I've done really well, you know. I've climbed up out of there, that tomb. I, I, although I am a bit breathless, but I'm sure I used to struggle a lot more in the early days when I was still trying to give up fags or something. Yeah. Oh God, I feel so I feel so at peace when I'm here. I just love this place. It's different to Sand Bay. I like the wildness here, and it's nice to see families out and about. I've done it with my own. I'm not always a solo. I'm not antisocial, by the way. But there's times in your life you need to... Really, people should get out on their own. They'll find themselves. You don't always have to have other people to justify who you are, Sheila. No, I don't. That's why I'm out here. Nature tells me. The church said to me, don't keep going. Don't do anything rash. Stay a bit quiet. I know I know what it's referring to. Just don't and don't panic.
I've got, I'm not as impulsive, I have got in the past very impulsive, passionate nature. Not good always. Sometimes you don't have that, you don't get anywhere either, so you need it. But you will need to keep calm. Keep calm, she do keep going on. God, look at this beautiful place, though. Yeah, I've definitely done that steep bit there in the past. I want to get up on that hill next, next time I come. Now, 10 years ago, I always said, no, do it now. Or 20 years ago, definitely. I'd have to do it now. I'm going up there the next visit. Right, I'm going to turn off for a while, folks. We're going to come back on in a minute. Over and out. Right. Crooks Peak. We're back here. We passed here several hours ago when we walked along a bit at the base of the peak. Then we went down that curve there and joined up a path down to Compton Bishop. Then we came, then after all that, we came up, slowly up to here. Now, the other week I went through that gate and went down that way. Earlier we came down, down this hill, wavery, wavering down. There's somebody coming every time I stop talking. And uh, I'm going to turn off for a minute. Hold on. Right, then we've got to the junction point. We're going this way. We're going this way. So we're up here, we are following a path, we're going round, we came down it earlier, we're going round it on the way back, so you get some lovely views over here, you'll get, so if we go over here you'll be able to see Compton Bishop again, I can see Glastonbury right over there, it's clearer than it was earlier, but of course I don't know how to zoom on this camera, but uh, we know it's there. Right, so earlier I walked all the way along, past that ridge there, went down into that valley, long skirting the other side of that field, to the village of Compton Bishop and the church of St Andrew. A quiet little, little place tucked away there. You can hardly see the church. It blends in really well with the group of trees there. But I'll get above it. So I was looking up here earlier and I was saying I'm going to be up on that hill. That's what I was saying. And here I am. I'm up on this hill here, looking down on the church, straight ahead of me down there. I'm going to take a picture. It might not come out, of course. Oh, no, we don't want me. Um.
fact, you might have got some awful shots in my face. Years ago, I wouldn't have minded, but I don't anymore. God, it ain't very nice. So, we came down that. But you know, I can hardly remember doing it. I was taking lots of pictures. And, uh, and like I said, I was down in this churchyard and uh, I was looking up here and I said, I'll be up there later. Yeah, we will, we will. That's what I said, when these, this weather's like this, you have to get out. Just, I mean, I've got loads of washing up to do. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. So I'm just leaving it. I've already got a, some sort of prawn mill organised for later. Um, and that's what I'll be doing, you seen that? I never quite know which path it was supposed to be on. I haven't done it this way round, so it's quite likely I'll get lost and end up having to climb up. That's my luck. Yeah, whether I was supposed to be lower, I've never really, can never remember actually. But it uh, looks quite level over there, doesn't it? Yeah, I remember doing that for the first time a couple of years ago, doing the, walking the base around. Then I did the peak, then I did the church, then I went down the other side, that's right. It was quite a big walk, actually. Was it? Yeah, it was quite a big walk. I don't know what if you call this a big walk or not. Oh, we're back on the track now. I just wanted to go off just to show you where. The church was, roughly was. Because we won't see it in a minute, you see. We'll be gone. A lot of people out having... I wouldn't have thought anyone would want to come out after eating dinner, though. So I said, it's a pity my daughter Zara's not a walker, really. Um, she hates it. She, uh, she has said, once we get her some sort of more waterproof shoes, she'll come up in the wood one day with this new dog she's got. He's got lots of energy and he, he'd be able to manage it. So, but it's getting the right day. It's getting her in the right mood. And, uh, and let him have an outing in the wood. I mean, he hasn't been in, he hasn't been driven in a car yet. He's got no training, and he is, he is very, very, very lively. He's a very lively dog, full of energy. He's beautiful, really. He's lovely. He's trying so well to behave. <laughs> He's messing. Oh, there we go. Look. If you want to ever go on that bit there, you just have to leave the main path and just come over a bit and have a look. That's all you have to do. I'll just take a picture. Hold on, because the camera's going to swing again for a sec. While I take a picture of that. Hopefully, these pictures will come out alright. I mean, they, they, the pixels are never brilliant. Um, you know, I can't help it. When you've had a really good camera, like my early Sony's, that could capture a flea on the eyelid of a, a seagull. I mean, when, when you've had cameras like that, we're absolutely excellent. It's actually very difficult not to criticise future photos. And I, because I've had so much trouble with Kodak after I spilt jelly on it, I don't know if I'll ever recover, to tell the truth. 
and this little Sony is doing well. I, what I could do with is another Sony like this one. These cost £500, the ones I've got now. See, if I wanted to cheat now, I could just climb up there, go up to the checkpoint. But I don't, I don't, I want to do this. I want to come around the edge. You can see all the Somerset levels from this side. Brent Knoll, Glastonbury, right over there. I'll, I'll take a picture, hold on. It might come out from a distance, who knows? Might do. Can you see Maggie watching me? I need Maggie. I haven't felt disturbed by her going. Um, I do miss her. But I haven't felt upset. Now I think that's probably the reason for that is because she was like, getting on a bit and I think to be quite honest I think she's gone with Bran. I think Bran's looking after her and they're together. That's how I like to see it. That they're together. Brandy and Maggie. And um, I like the thought of that. Sorry, I was pointing that in the wrong direction then. Is it still on? I can never tell with this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like, I like the thought of those two dogs together now. Um, but Maggie was about 17, I think. And uh, so she lived, she had a good life. She was a happy little dog. She was easy, really. I mean, she hated other dogs. She was vicious. She'd ripped them to pieces. She loved people. And she was a lovely, intelligent dog. And she absolutely adored Zara. Zara had to get a dog right away because she would have got really depressed. Um, and this dog is bossing her around quite a bit. That's a Brandy was like that. Sergeant Major Brandy was. She wasn't like it with me. She would worship me, Brandy did. <laughs> She fell in love with me first time she saw me. She went totally crazy. And um, I miss her. I missed her a lot. The pain when she went was all, like, like when Seeger died. It was horrendous. Oh, God. It took me at least three years to get over her. At least three years. I had to keep going on all the walks. Uh, some of the walks I didn't like doing because it reminded me of her. But now I can go out thinking, I did this walk with my Bran. She was Zara's dog, but we had a really good bond, me and that dog. And I had quite a good bond with Maggie, actually. And we had the German Shepherds. <sighs> yeah, I wouldn't have a German Shepherd again. Not, they weren't that hard to handle, wasn't that? It's just that they have got very protective tendencies. <sighs> There's a village again down there, look. Can you see the bench? I can see the lane going past the church. I used to be, yeah, down there, look. It won't come out, the sun's right in. I'll try and take a picture. 